Uh, hey guys, Tar 2 k here. Uh, gonna do a quick video. Uh, I saw some really bad misinformation online regarding how combo structures and how you figure out combos. Uh, it was a thread on R Tekken, so I've been planning on making videos like these for a while where I go over R Tekken concepts and beginner questions and making videos with them, but I've just never really sat down and made them. But this one was so egregious, I had to. So. Um, again, no editing. I'm actually technically at work, even though I'm working from home right now. So uh, it was it just threw me so off. We have to talk about it. So the question is, how do you know what combos work and you know and so on and so forth? So okay, here like for instance, this combo here used to work in old games, but it doesn't work anymore. So when you're building a combo, like in theory crafting, how does one uh, do combos rather than just either learn from pros and stuff like that, right? How do you actually learn how to do combos or make your own combos? Uh, and just like everything else in Tekken, it comes down to frame data. So let's go ahead and turn frame data on. And what I'm going to do, we'll do simple display. I think that's probably enough. No, it's not enough. Let's frame advantage. Uh, okay, maybe, maybe let's do show details. Fuck it. Okay, so down here, right? So uh, at the very top, we have the start frames. The very middle, we have frame advantage. And then, uh, you know, status, what the opponent's left in. So like, for instance, if I'm left in crouching, blah, 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 right? Okay, very, very easy stuff. So um, what you do, though, is when you launch your opponent, notice how there's two numbers. There's a plus 28 and a plus 18. So what that means is the opponent can't do anything for essentially 28 frames so if we do a stomp we hit them because the stomp hits on frame 24 so even though let's go ahead and put uh the bot on uh oh i guess he just stands up automatically right so he's block all stand so theoretically right okay he can he can stand up and block our stomp but why why does uh Kazuya not stomp here and of course the reason is uh in this game there's something called tech rolling or ukemi so in an ukemi it is when you're in a tech roll state. So anytime you're floating through the air, you are, uh, as soon as you touch the ground, able to Yukemi and evade incoming attacks. So what people don't tend to know uh, or don't really understand is actually during your tech roll frames, uh, and what we'll do, we'll go ahead and show this by showing the uh, opponent's frame data, and it should stay that he's invulnerable there you go, invincible, so you see it. So during Yukemi state, he's completely invincible. So what that means is he, there are 18 frames uh, in the parentheses before he can actually tech roll. And then on 18th frame, he's able to tech roll. And then he's invulnerable for, I think it's like five frames or something like that. So what that really means is even though we're technically plus 28, again, we can't hit them because our 24 frame stop is too slow. So now we can like extrapolate that data into follow-up attacks. So what we can do is I can use an option like forward four on 14 and because 14 is smaller than the, the, the parentheses plus 18, I can now hit the opponent. So I hit the opponent and now we have a new, uh, new set of data. So plus 19 is now the state before he's able to hit the ground and effectively tech roll. So with that information on plus 18, and sorry, I hit the turbo button, is now I can thread in something like a down two afterwards that hits on 18. So technically, I guess, same thing, 18, we can still hit him with the down two because he's still in a floating state. Hence, you know, the, the red doesn't disappear and shit like that. So, okay. So we take our plus 19 and then we can do something after. And you keep going down the line, understanding your as you hit your opponent, one of two things are happening. You are effectively changing the the properties on hit here right so you know depending on what attack you're doing the, the properties might defer you know certain high attacks are more valuable for combos than others uh because it gives you more and more frames okay sure uh but then also there's something called uh combo decay or like hit decay so the further the opponent is in the combo we're now going to have a position where they're getting pushed further and further back so notice how kaza here is effectively full screen so, but if I do it earlier in the combo, 4-4, four, four, he's left right next to me. Now, there's also other mechanics, and kind of keep hitting the turbo button, my apologies. Other mechanics such as a strong aerial tailspin state, which is one of these. I'm sure you've seen that very many times, so I'll do a simple combo. And actually, I don't know how I'm going to how pop this, so do it again. And actually, nowadays, you can do two of these, and then after the second one, uh, the opponent gets pushed really, really far away, but the the same like idea is still applicable, right? So we're in a in a straight. So let's go ahead and do uh, QCF one, three, and we'll do micro step three plus four, 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 
and we'll do a, a shorter combo line. And now I'm going to pop the meter, and now I'm going to do a strong aerial. But not, now, like I said, even though we're still technically plus 26, notice how Kazuya is pushed far away because that's the third strong aerial tailspin state. So we can't do that. So again, understanding that we our frames allow for slower options and or more damaging options is how combos are wor are important. Now, major, major fucking disclaimer, and this is another really key an under thing to understand, is um, when I did down forward two at plus 18, into down two, I'm basically cheating in the sense that it, it kind of misrepresents uh, speed of options. So the reason is, as you're plus 18 or the opponent's plus 18 in the air, he can't be hit at all times by high attack, like all attacks. So for instance, with Dragonov, we have a move like Portal plus two, uh, which is a high. So even though he's we're plus 18, uh, and this is a 17 frame attack, we miss him. Uh, and that's because, again, during this plus 18 state, he's only really uh, effectively like plus like, you know, uh, 15. And now here he's probably on frame 16. And then at the ground, he's finally on on 17 and 18. So uh, when we execute our forward on plus two, he is hitting almost hitting the ground. So he's, you know, he's way too low. Now, if we have a faster option like a back three on 14, we can link it because same thing during this time he is still in that little high buffer zone where we can hit him and again for the most part it's like two to three frames on mid final two frames low and then everything like five and quicker uh, otherwise or like four and quicker is in the high zone so there, there is a little bit of uh, uh notes to make like for instance there are characters with um I, no, with kazia when he does his electric even though it's a high uh, it hits really low, so there are a little bit of massaging that has to be kind of understood, but at the same time, like I said, uh, you have to understand the height of the character mid-combo really also determines what you can do. So um, I, I, I saw someone made a comment about Apley's video. I assume Apley talked about this, uh, but for the most part, yeah, usually combo structures, once you get out of the, the actual nitty-gritty frame data sort of stuff, um, then goes into the realm of what you should do uh, damage wise so all combos basically follow the same structure you have filler tornado spin into a strong aerial spin and then usually some sort of ender afterwards so not every character has a strong aerial tailspin state but for the most part that that obeys the rule so the one thing of note is when you're doing your first hits of your attack there uh, let's go ahead and is it uh, player attack info so now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the scaling of damage so 100% on the first hit. Now, granted, certain first hits have like clean properties. If you counter hit the opponent, uh, there's a, a damage modifier, typically 20%, but it, it defers depending on the character you're playing. Uh, so for the most part, it's 100 into 70 into 50, and then from there, it usually, I think, goes into 35. So I'm going to do like a really long combo. Okay, 40 into 30. And sorry, I'm looking at the thing. I'm not actually looking at the, the data. And then from here, it's going to keep essentially staying in this 30 uh, until we get to like the seventh hit, uh, seventh or eight, eight hit, in which case we hit another uh, negative uh, effect here. So the thing that you want to understand is because of how like the damage scaling is dealt, you want to do something that's called front loading. So uh, front loading is where you do a really strong attack at the very beginning. For instance, Dragonob uh, used to have 443, which used to be a tornado spin. So you could do like scud launcher into 443 and hit the opponent midair uh but now it doesn't work that way so you you can't thread it because it doesn't cost tornado spin but in older games you could but same thing we can thread in slower higher damaging options like i had shown earlier with qcf1 and then 44 or you can even go a uh, more modern day structure like for instance running two sorry running two into QCF4 and now pick up the opponent. And notice how we're also front loading at the same time uh, with an option like 4 4. So, guy okay, drop it, of course. 4 4, and now we do our normal combo from there. So, we're doing as much early damage, and notice the scaling uh, allows us to do almost 50% before we even go into tailspin or strong aero tailspin state, whatnot. But again, it all stems from the fact that your launcher types are going to allow for different options afterwards. So, for instance, 
um, you know, uh, QCF1 allows for down forward 3 plus 4, or QCF3 plus 4 off buffer, off sidestep left, uh, because, again, we're plus 51 in this spot. Also notice there's no parentheses. It's because from this position, Kazuya cannot actually tech roll. So we still have tech roll enabled. So if I put him into a, a standard state uh, where he's like, you know, recovering f uh, feet towards face up, then he can tech roll. But certain things don't allow for it. But here we're plus 51. Uh, if we go for Scud Launcher, we're plus 26. So with this type of structure, we can go for a, a stronger high option. So rather than going always for QCF 3 plus 4 and whatnot, uh, we can go for something like 4, 2, 4, 4, 4, 3 instead. So right away with just 5 hits in our combo, we've already dealt 60 damage. And that's all because of we're able to thread in a 4, 2 on 19 as a high and then still get the rest of the combo afterwards. So a lot of damage right away. So again, front loading is really important. Uh, extend the combo is really important. And of course, you want to do your best to get the opponent to the wall such that you're able to do even more damage, get more Oki, so on and so forth. But again... If you have no idea what you're doing, look at the actual frame data, understand the recoveries on the heights and how we can't actually hit them with like an 18 frame mid. Um, yeah, because there's just simply no time as they fall to the ground. And then as your combo goes along, uh, you're hitting them with you know, progressively more pushback and uh, other attacks like that. Uh, and that's why the value of like t uh, Tornado Spin, of course, uh, is so tremendous. Uh, because, yeah, if you look at the frame data, 56 allows us to dash up to him, allows for us to move around him. Uh, there's a lot of things we can do um, in that spot. So, like, for instance, if we need to push him to the wall, we can almost full step to his side uh, to get this capture going. And now we can still extend our combo because 56 frames is almost 60 seconds, almost 60 frames, sorry. 60 frames to a second, of course. Game runs at 60, so hopefully that helps out. Like I said, uh, the parentheses are really, really freaking important. And yeah, you sure you might play or learn or you know try to do combos on feel, but again, if you just simply look at the frame data, you know what options are valid. So okay, we're plus 17. Okay, um, I can probably thread in a, a lower option like a stand three or back four on 14, right? If if we have less front less frames, you know we're talking about plus 12, plus 11 at the end of your combo. Theoretically, you might be able to throw in like a generic down four. Uh, but oftentimes, it's maybe better to take Oki or go for a different combo line instead. So, yeah, hopefully that helps out. Uh, one other thing of note that I really should mention um, is the general or generic option everyone has, the Heat Burst 2 plus 3, hits on I-16, but it's also, um, it's also a mid. So keep that in mind. You do need frames, and even though it hits kind of lower to the ground, uh, you still need frames or adequate frames to hit them. So once again, keep in mind, Usually the last two frames are reserved for uh, a low state. So for instance, if down forward two was hitting on plus 17, uh, the heat burst would miss because there's no frames to hit them that low. At the same time, um, yeah, other higher mids not might not actually work uh, properly. So it, your mileage may vary per character. Uh, just keep in mind 16 is like the generic heat burst option. And obviously, you know, heat burst tends to have like decently good range okay maybe not that good range but still um the you can get around the you know hit the k pushback from options like heat burst and, and stuff like that and actually that's one of the things like really good players tend to do they'll do really long combos they'll do a little floating filler and then do a heat burst simply because it has so much range because it hits so low to the ground because it's so fast uh, so keep that in mind so uh yeah again hopefully this dispels some myths about you learn combos or you learn like better combos by feel um sure you might a little bit but at the end of the day uh the game still obeys rules uh, such as frame data so uh comments questions concerns youtube red twitch twitter i'll go ahead and release this right away um and i hope you guys have a great day and i'll see you guys at ceo later on